My brother used to rap. Devin used to rap. He used to keep me up all night. Yo, son, how this sound? How this sound? I'm like, oh, God, all night, every night. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, he knew. I didn't even notice he was he was noticing me, but he knew that I knew everything that was hot, everything that's going to be hot. It was like I was the go-to man because I was so heavily into the new shit and what's going on. So he watched me my whole life do that. So when it came to the Poison Clan thing, he just, he charged me with that, with that, uh, with that job right there. He was like, you the critic. They used to call me, first my name was Def Jeff, then it was a rapper that came out with that, so I had to change it. JT changed it to Two Def, so they was calling me Two Def, the critic. Then I changed it to Drugs, the critic. You know what I'm saying? So I was a critic, so it's like, nobody noticed, but before, no, put it like this, any rap, any lyric, any syllable you ever heard from that first album had to go through me. I was the gatekeeper every single lyric. You know what I'm saying? Niggas had a wow. dudes had a run up to me, and then if I didn't like it, I would just um tell them nonsense. I don't like this right here. You got to change. It. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they wouldn't like it or whatever, but it worked out. Like I was charged with that with that um job because my brother knew that I knew what it was. So when he was telling me, "Yo, come on, let's rap, man," I'm like, "I don't rap. I don't know how to rap." But he was like, his exact words like, "You have to know how to rap." You know what I'm saying? Because the way the way you put it down and critiques it and the way you know shit, you have to know how to rap. So it's like I believed him, and then I just started, I started rapping. So but that yeah. was all on him. He seen it on me before I seen it. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I forgot the other side of the question. No, I forgot the other side of the question. Oh, yeah, yeah. So then um, going on tour was ridiculous. That was like, that was like, I mean, that's like shit you can't even pay for. Like, I don't know how that life happened. That was beautiful. We was on tour. I said the height of their career, the height of the controversy. You know what I'm saying? We we on the news with them people calling us. Yeah, we seen you on the news, Channel Seven, this and that. Like, behind Luke, and yeah, I mean, we was everywhere. Everywhere Luke was, we were every across the whole country, everywhere. He even named us the Baby Two Live Crew, so he was looking out. He was doing his thing. But yeah, that was crazy. So when they that, 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 got arrested, and uh-huh. you were you you seen all that stuff go down. I seen everything from the beginning. Well, at least from when wow. we started, everything. Every, I, I, I was there. I was there when they started making me so horny. From that time on, I seen everything, everything. Well, I even seen when they when they was calling the girls into auditions for me so horny. I was like 15 years old. I'm looking at these women on the on the on the desk shaking and doing this, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. But yeah, they had it like that. It was like that. So that I can't even explain what it was. It was it was so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the Me So Horny record, you know what I'm saying? I mean it I mean, Two Live was big before that, but that really blew them up to the to the next level. And you were there while they were creating it. What was it like watching them at work? Well, let me see. Um to the third, I was like I don't know, it was like happening so much and so fast. It was too fast to process. All you could do is stare. You know what I'm saying? All you could do is just be there and admire it and watch it. It's, it's like everything was happening. It, it was just, <clears throat> it, I don't know. I can't even explain. It's like, it's like a dream. You look over there, two lot, uh, China man right there. Marquise got us in his Jeep taking us to uh, Heavy D video shoots on South Beach. And Luke right there, he on the tour bus with us. Mr. Mix, he taking us in his brand new Jag going to Bell Harbor buying all kind of Louis luggage and this and that and a big gold check. Yo, uh, it was just, it was, it was everything. Matter of fact, our first show at Splashdown in Miami, we was wearing, <laughs> we was wearing two live crew, big gold chains and all that. You know what I'm saying? We had, our first show, we did two shows in one day, Splashdown and Strawberry. You know what I'm saying? And Strawberry, we came through with the big gold chains on. Everybody had a, their own bottle of Moet and, yeah, we was just slicking it. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mr. Mix. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah. Yeah, Mick saw something in you guys. He knew there was some special poison clan. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. That's a super fact. I, I shout him out, man. He he really knew. He really knew. I ain't gonna shout out no other names, but anybody else down with the label, he, they it was him. He knew that. He seen something. You're right. So shout out to him. That's a fact. Yeah, Mr. Mick. Yeah, he he definitely, man. Uh, he's a creator too, man. Him in the lab, um, that had to be something to see him come up with those beats, the 808, and um, you know what I'm saying, that whole process too, man. What was it like watching him create? 
Well, when it comes to the create, when it came to creating the beats, like I said, I was running around in the street, but Debonair, he was focused. You know what I'm saying? So he would stick under um, Mr. Me. Oh, they, they was road dogs. He started being with him a lot, and I started being with JT a lot. Me and JT running around, end up in the studio when we got to, uh, uh, you know, things like that. But uh, Deb was with Mix all the time. You know what I'm saying? So as far as creating it and all that, you'd have to ask him. What, what, what I seen, it just sounded like boom, boom, bap, bap to me. You know what I'm saying? I was in all these drum machines. I didn't know what none of them buttons meant. So it might have been something super big to him, but to me it was just machines. I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I didn't know what was going on back then. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.